inviting me and giving me the time. Thank everyone out there for spending a little bit of time with us today. Dan asked me to present to you some about the National Ecological Observatory Network, which for the most part I'll be calling NEON. Uh, my name is Chuck Boha. I'm an aquatic instrument scientist here. I'm on the aquatics team. We have various sub-teams within NEON that I will go into some detail about here in a bit. Just quickly off the top here since it's on the screen, um, the observatory network itself is a facility, and it's run by NEON Inc., which is a nonprofit. Um, that nonprofit is solely funded by the NSF, and it's funded under the Major Research Equipment and Facilities Construction Program. So hopefully that's clear that uh, the facility itself, the, the network, is um, what we are designing. NEON Incorporated in, went through the planning stages, is into construction stages, and will be going towards operations. I personally came on board in January uh, when they started working a little bit more on designing the aquatic instrumentation and deployment of the instrumentation. Prior to that, I was with the USGS at the Illinois Water Science Center. NEON is designed to be a collaborative program with working with other scientists, with the general public, with educators. It's to have free and open access to all data and data products as we move into operations. Additionally, the structure of the network itself should be available for more research and for other investigators to request use of the equipment and facilities. As I gave a little bit of information about it, the time frame it has had about a decade of planning to this point. Currently, we're beginning a five-year construction period. Once the construction period is over, that's when the 30-year period of observations will begin. Obviously, during the construction period, there will also be some observations so that when those 30 years begin, everything should have good QA, QC, be vetted, and have input from the scientific community. Towards the end of the talk, I'm going to go a little bit more into an example experiment that is being run through the NEON network called the Strion experiment. I'm going to bring that up today because that is a little bit more aquatic in nature, so I think it'll be interesting for this group. Bear with me as I give you a little bit of an overview about NEON. I've been spending most of my time with the aquatic instrumentation. And so some of this overview will be presenting some topics that I know some about, but obviously not as much about as the different leads for those groups. I'll provide the contact information for those people as well. I'll give you an idea about the project, how big it is, where it's located, and then I'll go more into depth about the aquatics team, uh, some of the challenges that we're looking at, and some details about the site designs, including uh, observations and instrument systems. I'll talk a little bit about sensor selection and deployment, and then I'll tie it together with that example again at the end of um, I'm not aware if folks listening have heard much about NEON or Strion, so I'm going to start with the assumption that a few people may have heard some. Dan, you heard, has been involved with it for a little while now, uh, but I want to give a good overview for everybody as well. So what's the goal of NEON? It's to observe ecological change while keeping in mind and trying to stretch it across a continent in scope. That's to be done using uh, representative sampling, standardized methods that are based on uh, good standard practice that's already in the community. NEON is over 20 different domains, a wide variety of ecosystems and habitats. All these things, including the methods and protocols, will be made available to the public for use. This should lead to an ecological monitoring network across the entire continental U.S. It will also include sites in Hawaii and Puerto Rico and Alaska. 
The end result of this right now is that we are planning for 106 sites. Let me break that down just a little bit for you. Of the 106, there will be 60 terrestrial sites, which will be uh, towers with instruments on them and observations in the near area. Where possible, there will be co-located 26 aquatic stream sites and another 10 lake and non-weightable river sites. Additionally, the 10 Strion sites for that experiment make 106 measurement locations. That amount of locations, in addition to the wide variety, should enable comparison of data across a wide scale and across the entire country, making this a one of the first large-scale ecological observatories in the world. This is an important slide for us, so I'm, I am going to read this one. I'll try not to read most slides for you, but this one's important. NEON was solely funded by the National Science Foundation to enable understanding and forecasting of the impact of climate change, land use change, and invasive species on continental scale ecology. This is to be done by providing infrastructure to support research, education, and environmental management in these areas. That's, that's pretty broad. So it got narrowed down a little bit into seven grand challenges. These grand challenges were from the Natural Research Council from 2001 and again in 2003. It's nice to have the grand challenges here that we're looking at, but Neon wanted to ask some key questions about them. The answers for these questions make up our Neon data products. Currently, the data products are available on our webpage. That's neoninc.org. Uh, you can see at the bottom of the page here the variety of data that's being collected. All this is to be made available for a variety of users, scientists, educators, students, public, and decision makers. What does that really mean? Well, that means that the observation and data input from sensors that NAN collects will then be processed at headquarters then go under a fairly rigorous QA, QC, and verification process made available in the NEON web portal and out to the data users. Every step of that process will be open and available. Even the raw data will have to make sure to be clear about what's the raw data, what's calibrated, what's scaled, and what's been transformed, as well as potentially giving additional education on how to use these re resources. I will reiterate, because it's one of our key components, the is providing free and open access to all the data, all metadata, the QHC, both the processing, the standardization, and the data, all the protocol, and all the specs and characteristics, performance, basically everything we can get out to, every, to whoever requests it, we're going to make free and open. This is a key component of NEON and should go across the entire network. Where will NEON be? Well, this map includes all the sites. I have another one later on that will be just the aquatic sites. But this one uh, shows you the 20 different domains. I'll point out the uh, domain 20 of Hawaii, the Pacific Tropical because that is one domain where we do not have any aquatic sites. Each of those domains addresses and was identified to focus on at least one of the grand challenge questions. Most have more than one. The eco-hydrology systems in the bottom center of your screen shows the different locations that were identified to answer specific questions about eco-hydrology. However, that does not mean that the aquatic sites are solely located there. They will be located across the network in 19 of the domains with the exception of domain 20. This is going to be done by use of a variety of platforms. 
NEON has various science teams working to make the data comparable throughout the domains. This will be done using standardized methods. Hopefully, that will allow different data to be compared directly in different ecosystems and climates. Again, the goal being to make this continental in scale. In the bottom left, you see the terrestrial instruments, and you'll see an observation tower there. That's showing how the terrestrial instruments are mounted, and obviously these are artistic renderings and not to scale, but it gives a good idea. There'll be sensors on the tower gathering information, and then the observations for the terrestrial observation unit will be made in the near area. Aquatic measurements are made at as many co-located aquatic stream reaches as we can. I use the term co-located. Some are very close to the towers and others are a little ways away. There was some uh, discussion about how best to gather aquatic data and we needed to identify ecosystems where we could place sensors without damaging the surrounding ecosystem and yet still get good data. Both the terrestrial and aquatic measurement teams will conduct measurements with instruments and observations. Because I'm not going to talk about it again, I am going to spend just a little bit of time on the airborne observations right now. They provide a way for the NEON data to be compared on the same set of instruments on our airborne platform. It'll fly over sites, collecting various types of data, spectrometry, LIDAR altimetry, and high-resolution photography will all be picked up by the airborne observation platform. Obviously, that's a wide variety of locations, but we do have some concerns about each site. The point of NEON is to measure ecosystem changes due to climate, land use, and invasive species, not due to maintenance, site visits, and sample collection over the next 30 years. Because of that, we are taking steps to limit our contact with fragile environments. This is not just during the operations and data collection stage of the project. This is also during construction and even during site characterization work during investigations. As a matter of fact, the stuff that we're collecting, the information we're gathering from the sites now and in the past, we're saving to be able to pass on to field operations. That's everything from best access to safety issues and site preservation with information that we collect and what we can get from local scientists in the near area. What's this mean currently today? Well, the design and development phase is pretty well over. That was from 2008 to 2011. We are currently in the construction phase that began recently and is going until 2017. In 2017, that will be when we transition fully to operations and have full commissioning of the observatory network. On your screen now, circled in yellow, are the sites that are completed. These terrestrial tower units are up. The next one coming up is the Jones Biological Station in Georgia. Again, this is not full operations. This is just the civil construction for this. We should have some data coming in from these sites and should be available soon. For more information about all this stuff, uh, the different teams are listed on your screen. We have uh, contacts for them on the slide. It, it, these are hyperlinked. I know that you can't click on them on the presentation yet, but I think we will make all these slides available to everyone soon. They're also available on the web page at the top of the page there, as well as all kinds of information with up-to-date construction process and where we're at. That past slide that I showed you will be out of date very soon. It's out of date almost every month. All right, I'd like to spend a little bit more time, obviously, digging into the NEON Aquatics Program. And then again, at the end, I'll mention and go into some detail about the Strion experiment. There are all those subsystem teams. 
Each one does a variety of data collection. Aquatics uses instrumentation and field sampling. Here are the aquatic sites located across the network. You'll see lakes and streams and rivers. There are 26 streams, seven lakes, three non-weightable streams, plus another 10 strion sites. On this map, the strion sites are identified with rectangles. You will see that they are co-located with neon aquatic sites. That's a pretty wide variety of streams. They were selected to give us a range of geomorphologic and hydrologic regimes, and a variety of land use types. Not only the streams, but the lakes and the non-weightable streams were selected to get a range of lake sizes and depths. One example was the, in the southeast domain, that's D3 as we say here, uh, the large rivers and lakes were identified specific, specifically to address the eco-hydrology grand challenge questions. Every aquatic site is tied into one of the grand challenge questions. Here they are again, with the exception of infectious disease. This is one of the areas that we would like to ask for more input from the community, although not just with infectious disease, but we hope that the NEON Aquatics team is a platform for other scientists to be able to work with us going forward in the future. There are some specific challenges for the aquatics at NEON. These are a little bit different than my experience in the past has been, and I think it is common to have sensors and deployment designed to best capture an individual site or a few regional sites, NEON will be standardizing the deployment across the entire network. Since that's one of our basic goals on the project, that informs everything that we do. Uh, that also will show up in standardizing the frequency of the observations, both with instruments and with collecting samples. That brings up some other problems. Of course, with this wide range of sites, some of those problems are one site will have a flood and another will be dry. So to standardize that protocol, we're working to think about different uh, weather indicators or different flow amounts or trying to standardize it beyond just the calendar year. Obviously, we'll have some issues to learn about involving uh, turbidity. Some sites we expect to see a lot and others not. And biofouling of various sorts. I think this is a common problem that we're all quite aware of. We hope to work with the community more to come up with some while maybe not standardized solutions, at least standard, standardized questions and answers to address these issues. We find that the aiming for consistent QA, QC verification and using NIST traceable calibrations will be necessary. So here's a site. This is one of our stream sites. Obviously, it's just an artistic rendering, not to scale. But I think it does a good idea of giving an example. Each site will have two sensor stations in the water. Those are controlled by a location controller that provides both power and communications to the sensors. There is a meteorological station located near the shore. That meteorological station is important because the terrestrial tower has the same instruments and will be maintained in as close to the same way again, going for standardized practices, as this net station. That will enable direct comparisons to be made between stream sites and terrestrial sites and across all the domains in the network. At each site, there will also be up to eight groundwater wells. We are monitoring both surface water and groundwater. 
Likewise, here's a lake set up. This is nice because it has a well-defined inlet and outlet. We're quite aware that many lakes do not have so defined surface water inlets and outlets. Nevertheless, we are going to have two sensor sets um, trying to gather information at those two points. Again, there's the location controller serving the same purposes. In this case, that will often be radio communication and a meteorological station. Again, up to eight groundwater wells. One of the differences here is a lake buoy in the middle, which will have a profiling sensor set where possible. Some lakes may be too shallow. The ones that are able to have a profiling sensor set will move at a set speed um, down through the water column and back up collecting information along the way. The aquatic team at NEON is divided into two systems. We call them the AIS and the AOS system. AIS, aquatic instrument systems, I'll get into a little bit more detail here shortly. Aquatic observation systems I'll do here right now. Uh, the continuous water quality monitoring instrumentation monitors many uh, qual water quality parameters that are familiar to most of you. And as I said, I'll go into a little bit more detail, especially about a couple of the things on there that aren't so difficult here shortly. However, some water quality parameters are not easily measured with fixed instrumentation, which leads us to our aquatic observation system. Sediment chemistry and water chemistry and habitat can be monitored, but not necessarily done well with continuous water quality instrumentation. Of course, these measurements and samples will not be available as quickly as the data streams off the instruments, but they will still be collected with standardized methods where both the methods and the collections will be made available to data users. So where there are collected species, NEON will be having a collections unit that will be an available resource to others to, for others to use. Additionally, we'll be doing discharge measurements at a variety of flows to develop a discharge ratings curve. Each year, morphology will be surveyed, likewise for the lakes and non-weightable streams. The chemistry and water quality samples are happening quite frequently throughout the year. Again, as Dan said at the beginning, these standard protocols are currently being reviewed and we um, should shortly be able to publish these and make these available. I'll point out this is both for surface water and groundwater. And we're doing a couple more things with sediment and isotopes. Organismal sampling will be happening each, well, each year as well, fairly frequent basis. These strategies and the, um, the frequency for each year are being determined right now, um, as well as looking at the protocols. We actually use people around the office that aren't so, um, I guess, scientific or technical in their background to check for clarity in our protocols. As NEAM moves into op operations, these protocols will be available. The sample frequency and strategy will be determined by these ongoing factors with hydrology, temperature, and riparian phenology. All the field observations will be conducted alongside the deployed sensors. Similar to the observation system, instrumentation systems will have standardized maintenance protocols and rigorous QAQC. Even the ATBDs, which are the algorithm theoretical basis documents and the command and control documents that we use to define how frequent sensors test, how they communicate, what form that data, that raw data is available in, all that will also be transparent and available. 
All right, that brings us to the aquatic instrument system. This is where I do most of my work. You'll recognize a lot of these water quality parameters. I want to point out, though, we also are having photosynthetically active radiation sensors, both above water and underwater, to get an idea about stream metabolism. To remind you, this will be at um, 36 sites across the country under a range of hydrologic regimes, physical characteristics, and land use types. On the right, you see a little diagram that shows one design. And I'll get back into that a little bit more here in a second. All these sensors are commercially available off the shelf. NEON is not developing new sensors. However, as an observatory, we do have the capability to develop new technology in cooperation with others down the road. I told you that the sensors would be available, what we're using, how we're using them. However, we're currently identifying the manufacturers of the sensors and the selection process is ongoing. We must await NSF approval to prevent bias as we select those sensors. So that will be available, but is not yet open for the public. Meanwhile, the installation of sensor and the design work is ongoing. This is, opens up the chance for me to request more input from others. We don't want to do this on our own. We don't want to make these decisions entirely without help from the uh, general scientific community. So we are forming an aquatic instrument technical working group. And if you're interested, please contact me through email and we can talk about that more. I'll give a few more details about that here in a little bit. But to get back to what we're currently doing with the aquatic sensors, we're testing them in the field and we're testing them in the laboratory. Here's one of our prototype designs. This is at the Arikari River in Colorado. This is about half an hour west of Kansas, although this river is still snow fed and goes dry right about now. Some of my colleagues are there today. On the left, you'll see the sensor mount design. Uh, this is our fully enclosed design. We do have a variety of designs. We're trying to make a playbook for our field operations units to be able to select the most accurate and useful deployment. In this case, there is a sensor mounting disc that allows each sensor to take measurements at the same depth in the water column. Here's the surface PAR sensor. Again, you'll see on the right, this can be uh, mounted in the stream bed, in this case in a sand stream bed. The water level happens just anywhere above where the PVC pipes start to be perforated. If we need to have less PVC pipe below that, that is certainly easily doable. The whole goal of this is to be able to have our sensors take useful data down to depths of creeks that are only two inch deep or so. Pretty tall order, but that's the goal. Likewise for lakes, here's the underwater PAR sensor. This would be the setup that is mounted at the inlet and outlet of the lake. In that diagram I showed earlier that was surface water driven. We're well aware that could, that could be groundwater and more investigations are needed to properly locate these sensors. This is the lake buoy. This is very much even pre-prototype stage. There is a request for information out to several manufacturers as we work towards this design. You see the sensor set deployed below the buoy, and that will be on an automatic profiler. Again, the command documentation for how often that moves, how fast or slow it goes, will all be available. The sensor data streams will go through a rigorous QAQC, roughly presented here as a two-step process. This has a automated QC process on the left that will then be verified and checked by scientists and provided in near real-time availability with redundancy. 
data should be available to the NEON web portal both after it's gone through QA, QC, and verification in a very quick turnaround to data users. Because I am presenting today to a group of people that have some uh, aquatic technical expertise, this does give me the opportunity to talk about some of the challenges and therefore opportunities that we see for our role in the community and working with this community. It's probably obvious that we use a variety of terminology and it would be good to be able to work together to come up with consistent terminology and shared vocabularies. Likewise, one of the important things here is the gap filling metrics. The reasons and the whys for working with data streams off aquatic instruments. I mentioned briefly before about the instrument working group. Currently, we're looking for applicants to participate in that aquatic instrument working group. That group will serve as an advisory body to help NEON scientists create a stronger network of aquatic instruments by providing expert opinions, input, and feedback to NEON in support of the design, construction, and operability of the NEON instrument network. Please do drop me a line later about that if you're interested and we can talk about it more there. Okay, that brings me to the Strion experiment. It's called Strion for Stream Experimental Observatory Network. The goal of Strion is to be an example of pulling together observatory science and instrumentation data streams. This network should couple those data together into one package. Strion is an experiment within the NEON Observatory and it's designed to explore the effects of common environmental stressors on streams over a 10-year continental scale. Here's a Strion reach. This diagram also shows the control reach upstream. That would be the typical NEON aquatic reach. Strion will be downstream of that. A nutrient enrichment treatment will simulate eutrophication and a primary consumer exclusion treatment will mimic the loss of top consumers in stream ecosystems. This will be going for 10 years. The changes monitored by those measurements will include looking into the static food web, biological diversity, and abundance metrics. Water chemistry will be measured by continuous water quality monitors and water samples, subsurface water levels, and more chemical attributes. Annual changes in stream morph morphology will be surveyed. Again, as with all other NEON-generated data, Strion data and data products will be open access and freely available via the NEON web portal. Once the two treatments are done, uh, could be either of a variety of limiting nutrients here, we've got nitrogen and phosphorus. Then the uh, primary consumers will be excluded, and native sediment-filled baskets will be deployed in both the NEON control reach and the Strion treatment reach. After a predefined period, the baskets will be extracted and placed in closed recirculating chambers shown here to conduct measurements such as oxygen production and nutrient uptake. So that's about what I have for today. Uh, a few conclusions for you. The Minyan Aquatics team has a goal of addressing the grand challenge questions by sampling aquatic chemistry morphology, hydrology, and biology. This will be done using standardized sample designs and strategies. To refresh your memory, the questions, the grand questions that this will address are climate, land use, invasive species, biodiversity, biogeochemistry, and eco-hydrology. Finally, Strion is an experiment to provide information of stream processing and function 
that is being run through the NEON network to pull together both the data streams off instrumentation and NEON observations. You've got my name and number here as well as my email to contact me uh, after this webinar. So thanks for the time.